The results are in, and the Minnesota Wild nailed the 2022 NHL trade deadline. But what led to Bill Guerin having so much trade success where his predecessors in previous years have not? We talk about that and more today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and is available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, Alexis Pearson of the Bar Down Beauties podcast joins to help us get a sense of of what new team psycho Nick DeLaurier brings to the table. We'll also take a look at where the Wilds trades put them amongst the Central Division and the Western Conference playoff chase. My name is Seth Topal, host of Lockdown Wild, your veteran captain, and I'm going to crown myself the new president of the Nick DeLaurier fan club uh, because, I mean, let's be honest, everybody wants to be in that grouping, such as our guest today, Alexis Pearson, who is the president of the Marcus Foligno fan club. And so, uh, Alexis, glad to have you on as always. And we're riding high here uh, in Minnesota. The trade deadline is over. The Wild went nuts. They brought somebody in who can go nuts on the ice, (laughs) Nick Delorier. And so let's just start with the deadline. What do you think? Which move do you think is going to be the one that pays off most for the Wild down the stretch? First of all, the Wild were more active than I thought they were going to be at the deadline. I didn't necessarily know if they were going to just stay pat. Like, I I, I don't know. I just get the sense that Billy G is not that kind of guy. And obviously, the Wild had missing pieces. I wouldn't have been mad per se. Going into the trade, let me put it this way. Going into the trade deadline, I kept telling myself I wasn't going to be upset if the Wild didn't make any moves. Because I really do think the Wild have a very good team. I think they've done a lot of great things. And I think that they have a lot of the right pieces to be successful in the playoffs. Are they my number one pick to win the Stanley Cup as of right now? Probably not, but I think they're a very good team. Then after I saw what Billy G did yesterday, I'm like, okay, wait a second. I changed my mind. I love everything. I love all of this. Wait, props to you, Billy G. You're the king, and this is why you're the GM, and I'm just over here talking about all the moves you made because I – some of the things he did, I wouldn't have been, ex- I wouldn't have expected him to be able to pull off in the way he did. And I think the the thing that I love the most about the moves he made yesterday is not even per se like who he got. It wasn't necessarily the names or like what teams he got them from. The two biggest things for me was a he addressed every area the Wild had an issue in, big or small. He addressed goaltending. He addressed defense. He addressed the center position in a way with Jost um, and some of the pieces there. Um, and two, he didn't sell the farm to get these pieces, which that was kind of my biggest concern going into the trade deadline and why I was more on the side of like, Hey, if you guys don't do anything, I'm not gonna be that mad. Cause I really like the pieces we have and I don't want you to get rid of everybody. Um, so I thought he did a very good job using the money that he has right now, because that money won't be here next year because of the cap hits due to Zach Parise and Ryan, um, suitors buyouts. So I thought he did a great job with the money he has not selling the farm and addressing all the issues the Wild had. And I think at the end of the day, that's all you can really ask a GM to do because you never know how a trade's going to pan out until you give the new guy time to adjust in his on his new team. So the the most you can hope for is that, you know, they don't completely um, – you know, bring the whole team down with the moves that they made money wise, confidence wise, morale wise. And you hope that, you know, they address the issues. And I think Bill Guerin did that yesterday. And so overall, I gave Bill Guerin's uh, trade deadline an A minus. I'm very thrilled with with what he did. And I'm really, really excited about seeing these new pieces uh, for the rest of the season and, and hopefully uh, through a very long playoffs for the Minnesota Wild. We have yet to see Marc-Andre Fleury and uh, Jake Middleton in action. Um, obviously, with the trades going down yesterday, takes him a little while to get here. Yeah. Fleury was, uh, was, was already here and was in uniform, which that, um, that was something. That yeah. was, uh, it's going to take me a little while to get used to. But <laughs> it was very weird seeing him in a wild jersey. It was very strange. <laughs> and, and I was sitting there and I saw the video of him saying he uh, he was here. 
and was excited to get started. And at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm in. See, what what sold me on Flurry was, and I, part of me didn't believe Billy G was going to be able to pull this off again without being able to sell the farm. Like I know Billy G is very good at his job, but I just kept thinking, I saw some of the asking prices for Mark Andre Flurry, and I'm like, man, I don't know if the wild can like maneuver this in their favor and, and get this good piece without giving up too many good pieces. So I was kind of sitting at like, if you would have asked me on Sunday, if I thought the wild were going to land Flurry, I would have given you. I would have said maybe 50 50 because it seemed like he really wanted to come to the wild. It, that didn't seem to be an issue. But again, I didn't know if the wild had the right um, trade pieces to get him. Um, the thing that really sold me on Flurry, and everybody knows Flurry's like a great guy. Like it's kind of hard to hate him. You know, it's we, we hate the guys who are so good because you never want to play against him. But he's one of those guys where it's like, man, like he's just such he's the kind of guy you want to root for. And it's going to be really fun being able to root for him guilt free <laughs> on the Minnesota Wild now. And Russo tweeted out, I think it was, you know, right after the Wild acquired him, they, before the press conference, apparently, um, maybe it was in the press conference, Flurry said it, but the, the Wild played the Blackhawks on Saturday and Flurry said that he was, you know, and Flurry was on the bench for that game. And he said, I was sitting on the bench, just looking at the packed, you know, arena and seeing all the Wild fans in there and just imagining how cool it would be to play for this team. And that I was like, that's all you got to say. I'm a Minnesota and all you got to do is tell me you want to be here and I'm sold. And so as soon as I heard that, I was like, man, it's, it's, it's really exciting to get him on the team and um, just know Knowing that a guy like him is a clutch goalie, it you I've been going back and forth. I'm like, okay, but he's older and his stats haven't been that good this year. And but he played for Chicago and does he have any gas left in the tank? At the end of the day, Fleury's one of the most clutch goalies of all time. He's got the history, he's got the records, he's gonna be in the Hall of Fame, and now he's a Minnesota Wild. So I'm really excited to see at some point when he gets that first start and, and hopefully help the Wild to a long playoff run. Well, and I, I think we're seeing we saw against Vegas, what might be a byproduct that we hadn't necessarily anticipated in that now Cam Talbot has some legit um, competition mm -hmm. for the starts down the stretch. And so I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was a factor in, uh, in why the goalie numbers were, uh, were trending in the wrong direction mm -hmm. is maybe just both guys getting a little too comfortable, but mm -hmm. If, if Talbot, you know, he's obviously not going to, uh, I can't say that. I was going to say, <laughs> he's obviously not going to post a shutout every game the rest of the season. But if it, uh, if it causes him to step his game up a little bit and then Flurry also does the same, mm -hmm. that, um, mm -hmm. that could be a huge win win. Uh huh. Hey, listen, I. I know Dean mentioned in the post game yesterday, he said he, you know, somebody asked him something about Talbot shutout and, you know, Talbot putting on a great performance coming off of a day where they acquired a, you know, Hall of Fame, future Hall of Fame goaltender, right? And that's, this is a tough spot for goalies in the NHL. This happens all the time and it is not easy to put your quote unquote starting netminder in that position. Um, and then to have them go out and play the way Talbot did last night is, is absolutely huge. And Dean, I thought, put it really well. He's like, why does it have to be just one? He's like, if we have two great goalies, like you said, Seth, we've got two great goalies then. Like, everyone's acting like, oh, so is Flurry going to be a starter? It's like, who cares? Don't you just want two goalies who are just playing at the top of their game? I don't care if they split goaltending duties, if Talbot gets the most of the starts and Flurry steps in and gets some wins when we need him, or vice versa. I, At this point, just put in the goalie who's playing the best. Play the hot hand. That, that's the way to do it with goaltenders, period. And if you have two goalies who are playing as well as we've seen Talbot playing and as we know Flurry can play, I mean, the, the options are endless. So I, I was very impressed with Talbot's game, and it's kind of weirdly flown under the radar a little bit. Talbot's won his last seven games he started in. Like, first of all, everyone's just completely crapping on me for the goalie thing. I'm like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Talbot's playing incredible right now. I'm just like, I don't know what to tell you. Just go look at the numbers. Um, and it's kind of been a little quiet because I think while the team in general has been finding its groove, everyone's just happy the while they're playing well again. But a big reason for that has been the goaltending from Cam Talbot. So I don't, I don't know how they're going to do goaltending duties the rest of the way. Um, they, they were kind of doing the split duties, like you mentioned, with Capo and Cam. Um, and if they're going to continue to go that route, whether that's the fatigue factor or because they have the, the skill between the two to do both of that, um, then why not? I mean, hey, what, did, what was a big reason the Wild had such a long playoff run in 2003? 
they had two goalies who could freaking rock and roll on any given night. So that is, that's a huge thing that can benefit a team that very few teams over the course of a season have the luxury of, of having where you've got a goalie tandem like that. So we might be getting ahead of ourselves, getting this excited about it, who knows, but we know the potential is there. And I think that's, that's one of the most exciting things about the flurry acquisition. Yeah, it's and just overall, the approach at the trade deadline, I think, is such a refreshing change of pace because, as we'll talk about here next, um, Bill Guerin does it a little different than Chuck Fletcher did, and uh, I think that's a good thing for Wild fans. So we'll uh, we'll dive into that a little further as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild with Alexis Pearson after this. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm-fresh produce that arrives within a week, so you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you the wait in long lines and ensuring you don't waste money on excess food. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you save, on average, over $65 a month with HelloFresh when you order instead of grocery shopping. That is money directly back into your pocket. And HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week including veggie, fit and wholesome, family-friendly, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Go to HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use the promo code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, go to HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use the code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wilds. And once again, thank you for making Locked on Wilds your first listen every day. Seth Topol joined by Alexis Pearson. Make sure that you are following the Bar Down Beauties podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, I know, uh, Alexis, you had uh, a nice preview of the trade deadline. I would imagine a uh, pretty good recap is uh, going to be hitting the Mm -hmm. podcast feeds next week. Yes, absolutely. And we posted some stuff on our social media as well, just to get those instant reactions, as we all know, uh, is how you do it in sports. Um, But yeah, previewed some stuff and uh, panicked, trying to figure out, do we have to re-record stuff or change stuff? And they obviously decided to not trade for Flurry on Sunday when we could have re-recorded and instead do it after we already released our episode, as as, you know, GMs love to do. Um, No respect for the podcast game. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But yes, we will have a new episode coming out um, this upcoming Monday with some more recapping on all the moves the Wild made this week. I I do want to talk a little bit between Bill Guerin and Chuck Fletcher. I do have to preface, though, that nothing that I say is like a huge dig at Chuck, but it is so nice to have a GM who has been so aggressive with what he's done since he started. Mm -hmm. But I think that aggressiveness stems from just having like a full-blown plan as to what uh, what Garen wants this organization to look like top to bottom. And, you know, I, I'm sure Fletcher had a vision that he wanted to see this wild team get to. Obviously, being kind of a low-level playoff team for so many years probably ended up being some portion of that vision. So mm-hmm. it, it just it, it's a nice change of pace to see a guy who says, all right, we're going to go all in and then actually does it. Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, as fun as we love to just make fun of Chuck Fletcher, and deservedly so at times, I mean, this Minnesota Wild team this year is one of the best Minnesota Wild teams we've seen in its history. So, to be fair, I do think that helps a GM in a lot of ways because the team has a bit more of an identity, and the GM knows a lot more what they're looking for, and I do think in a lot of the years, you know, with with previous GMs, it's like the Wild didn't even know what they were. They're fighting for a playoff. It's like, are we good? Are we bad? I don't know. We're somewhere in the 
middle. We might go make a long playoff run. We might not even make the playoffs. Who knows? And this year, this team has a much better identity than what we've seen before. And I, I agree with you 100% that I think Bill Guerin is the kind of guy who knows exactly what he wants. But not only does he know what he wants, he knows exactly how to go get it. And then on top of that, he does go and get it. So it's like this like trifold kind of plan that he has where it, it's t- – I mean – the GM job in sports is so, so tough. And it's easy for us as fans to critique it and say, like, why the heck did you give that up? Why the heck did you get this person? Why would you do that? Why would you pay them that much money? Or why, you know, whatever. Um, but it's a tough job. And that's why I have so much respect for Bill Guerin because time and time again, he's shown how good he is at that job. And I don't know if I've seen people say a bad thing about him since he's been here. I mean, Wild fans seem across the board to be just generally thrilled with Bill Guerin and the trust that they have in him. And maybe it is because it's refreshing and a different kind of scene than we've, than we've had before as far as that position goes. Um, but man, like I said, just time and time again, he just goes out and executes on, on exactly what he wants to do. And he, he, you know, he gives this wild fan base so much hope on a daily basis that this team is as good as everybody thinks it is. And I think that's what makes it so exciting. Well, and just the way that he handles some difficult things, like the Jack McBain situation, obviously a tough one. Mm -hmm. Like a talented kid who just didn't really see a path to getting to the NHL with this wild team. Did you see what he said about him, though? What Garen said about McBain? I mean, that's what I mean, though. Incredible. For for those who don't know, I mean, Garen was asked, like, you know, was it hard to part ways with him? And he literally, like, deadpan was like, no, like. He didn't want to be here. I don't, I don't want him here. Like, simple as that. Like, that's how simple it is in Bill Guerin's mind. Like, he's not here to play games. He's not trying to be cute. Like, he's going to do what's best for this team and to hell with anybody who doesn't feel the same way. Yeah, like, I remember seeing those comments and I'm like, <laughs> whoa. <Boy. laughs> yeah. Sorry. Good luck. Um, good don't luck. Don't let the door hit that, you on the way out. <laughs> good luck with that 5,000 seat arena in Arizona. Be a lot of people that can get a chance to see you play one C with the uh, checks notes Arizona Coyotes, but not only that, the Victor Rask thing too. Like we're we're getting set for like all the reaction stuff yesterday after the two o'clock deadline had hit, mm-hmm. all knowing that there were just a ton of trades that still hadn't been processed, and all of a sudden Russo pops in and says, "The Wild do have one more trade in the works," yeah. and everybody's like. What, what what could it be? What could it be? Yeah. Bill Guerin got Ron Francis <laughs> to pay half of Rask's salary the rest of the year to go play for Carolina's AHL affiliate. Mm-hmm. That's how good of a GM Bill Guerin is, mm-hmm. is that he got Victor Rask to go away, mm-hmm. and Ron Francis is helping him pay for it. And that's, I think, I mean, there's something to be said about the fact that a GM like that who is just so smooth with the, I mean, like you would, if you would have told me he would have been able to finesse that, I would have said, no, he wouldn't have. Nobody can finesse that. You couldn't even convince me to do that. And I have no idea how the inner workings of that kind of stuff goes. Like I, I just, in again, it, he makes it, it's just so smooth and seamless. Like when I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, of course. Like it just made so much sense. And it's just like, that's why he's so good at what he does. And I mean, think about trade deadline day, how many things are happening. How did Bill Guerin manage to address every single problem the Minnesota Wild have all in the span of like 12 hours? I don't know. I I don't know how he did it because I mean, to be able to wheel and deal with that many different teams and get this contract off your hands and, and bring this guy in and fill this gap and get freaking Mark. Bill Guerin was on the plane to go get Mark Andre Fleury. I don't understand how he did all of this at the same time. Like when I saw that, I was like, what the heck? So, I mean, all hail Billy G go off King, Do, live your best life. I could have, I could have a, like a 2023 20, Tesla. And Bill Guerin would find a way to sell me like a 1995 <laughs> Honda Civic. And make you still pay for half the Tesla. <laughs> and make me feel good about it. Yeah. Like, geez, I had this brand new car, but I I talked to Bill and like this thing, this thing is great. And your friends were like, there are rust spots everywhere. It's just, yeah. oh, it's just, it's the absolute best. And you know, it seems like Every interview that he does, every interview that he does, like subsequently to the previous one that he did, mm-hmm. he just seems more and more like just 
one of one of your like your group of friends going out to you know hit the town just just seems like one of us yeah 100 percent that's one of the things that I initially loved about him when he became the GM of the wild. I'm like, man, he is so honest and candid and like in sports, it can be hit or miss. Like it kind of depends on the sport. You sometimes get more personality out of the athletes and the coaches than others. And it depends on the team and the city they're playing in and how good or bad the team is at any given time. But a lot of times athletes and, and people who work in sports on the management level kind of get a bad rap for like, okay, you're just giving us lip service. You're not, you're just telling the reporters what they want to hear. Not that you're lying or anything, but you're just kind of going the easy route of answering the questions and, and, or choosing to just not answer the ones you don't want to talk about. Bill Guerin is so honest when he answers questions and, and brutally honest and, and, and tough love in ways too, where he's like, you know, like with the Jack McBain thing, he's like, I don't care. You know, like he, he just doesn't have, you know, not, I don't want to say he doesn't have any remorse for, for the things that he does as a GM, but he's just so honest with everything that he does. And that to me shows how confident he is in his own actions. Like he firmly believes that everything he's doing is the right move for the team. And that's the kind of GM that I want. I don't want you being like, oh, you know, we hope it works or yeah, you know, it's sad to see him go. He's like, nope, that guy's here and we all love him now. And that guy's gone and we're not going to talk about him again. Like that's how simple it is to him. And I mean, I see the quotes that that the reporters put out there. And anytime I've, you know, listened to him in an interview or been around him for an interview, I'm like, man, he just, and he doesn't even flinch when he answers. You know, it doesn't take him any time to tell you what he needs to tell you. And I just have a ton of respect for a GM who can go out and do that because GMs get some of the toughest questions in sports and more so than the athletes, more so a lot of times than the coaches. And that's a tough job. Um, to have to talk to media in. And I understand that as someone who works in the media, that we do make their jobs tough sometimes. And to have that kind of candidness and honesty from from a GM is, like you use the word refreshing. I It's just, it's one of the things I initially loved about him and one of the things to this day that I still have a ton of respect uh, for. Yeah, it's it's the absolute best. And his his overall demeanor is reflected in this wild roster. And, you know, it's... It's no, it's no coincidence that the team, you know, is back on track and they've got enforcers at every level and they're going to just, they're taking off. They're going, I'm calling it right now. They're going on another run. Okay. T. They're going on another run this year. It, it's, it might be eight Oh and one. It might be better than that, but I feel it in my bones. It's not the rain because I, I that's, a, that's a distinct other that's, feel. That's a whole different feeling. That's a, that's a bad feel in my bones. This yeah. is a good feeling. You're going on another run. So well, buckle up. And I think, too, the last thing I want to say about Billy G is I think that, you know, you talked about, like, the way the players react to having a GM like that. And I really think that a GM like Bill Guerin, just by not even necessarily what he says to the players or what he does when he's around the players, but just knowing that that guy is in charge of your future – I think that makes everybody play a lot better because you see him deal somebody off with zero thought about it. And you're like, that could be, that could literally be me tomorrow. You know what I mean? So, and I know players obviously try not to think about that and you just go out and play the game and you don't want to worry about, you know, where you're playing tomorrow or a week from now or a year from now. But I really do think there's this sense of almost like the way you fear your parents because you don't want to disappoint them or, or whatever. I think that's how I see the wild reacting to Bill Guerin as their GM of like, man, we got to play hard because this guy will get rid of us if we don't. And nobody's going to be spared. doesn't matter how long you've been here, how many points you have. If you're not playing for this team, he will find you a different team to play for. And I, I really think it's that simple. I love it. Well, let's, let's finish off by just looking at kind of where the rest of the division stacks up because the teams directly above and below the Minnesota Wild had very different trade deadline days. So we'll talk mm-hmm. about that. I do want to talk about Paul Allen's 2021-2022 radio debut. So we will turn this episode of Locked on Wild loose after this. Spring is here, and that means it's time to spring into eating better and looking better with Bill Bar's help all along the way. And if you're looking for a little bit of a change of pace from your normal Bill Bar favorites, Puffs are the perfect route to go if you haven't tried them yet you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. 
Most built bars, like Puffs, contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to your standard candy bar with around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. If you want to get in on the Built Bar Mania or to try Puffs, head to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off of your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Again, I tell you, your second listen of the day today better be the Bar Down Beauties podcast. I will not accept (laughs) any other answer to that question other than the Bar Down Beauties podcast. Uh, Alexis, just a couple things to finish up. Got to talk about PA. (laughs) Getting a chance to step into the radio booth to call the game against the Golden Knights. Mm -hmm. Last night, I know you work with the uh, the Wild Radio Network, so you had a chance to see it all unfold unfold in person. Um, I liked what I heard. <laughs> yeah, it was it was honestly like I was thinking about it after work. I'm like, that was honestly one of the cooler moments of my career so far. Even though like I didn't really play that big of a role in anything, I was just kind of there. But like just being able to be a part of it was so cool, and uh, it was a really unique situation for those who maybe didn't hear kind of the backstory on it. But I mean, basically, PA like was like, I want to do this in a suite instead of the press box, and I want all of my friends and family there. And they were like, okay, so we put him in a suite, and all of his friends and family came, and then all of us who work there were there as well. Um, Zach Halverson and I were there. Kevin Falness was obviously on on the show with them uh, for the night. Tom Reed did the color and um, he had some of his, you know, Vikings people there helping out some other K fan people. And uh, his son was there. It was just, it was a really cool moment. And I mean, PA, like anybody who knows PA on a personal level, he is pretty much the same as he is on air. <laughs> um, like there's really no, it's, it's the same. There's no two PAs. It's the same person. Um, and he was just so fired up leading into it and so excited and just getting to like we were sitting I was sitting in the seats of the of the suite and kind of turning around looking behind me every now and then and just watching him work and it was so fun getting to see it because back when they first announced he was going to do games this was right before COVID hit and I would he would come to wild games and I would sit with him in the press box and we would literally like practice call the game together and he would ask me questions about okay what's this call what's that called because you know PA is a football guy so a lot of the stuff he had to learn to be able to do this obviously the the you know broadcasting aspect he's got down like nobody other nobody else right. um, but learning the sport um, took him some time and so I was so excited to see him and hear him execute it so perfectly and afterward uh, he pulled his headset off gave everybody big hugs and was thanking everybody for being there and. Uh, He'll be doing it again on Thursday against the Canucks. So if you guys missed all of the fun and want to hear it in real time, make sure you check out the wild broadcast um, on KFAN on Thursday night. And PA will be back on the call for it. We'll be back in sweet. Do it all over again. PA, if you're listening, <laughs> well done, young man. Yeah. Um, I did want to, you know, we both work as well in uh, high school sports. Mm-hmm. And you obviously do a lot with calling games um, at various levels. And... I don't know if there's a better feeling and and could really hear this in PA's call when you get into that just zone where your brain just kind of shuts off and Mm -hmm. instinct instinct just takes over and you're you're saying like you're speaking in tongues almost Mm -hmm. in uh, in getting the game going. And I I have a lot of friends that don't get a chance to do this kind of thing. I really can't come up with a good way to describe it. Like after a game is done, they're like, geez, you, you just, you sound ridiculous yeah. like in a good way. And I'm like, just, just kind of went on autopilot. It just happened. I honestly tell people like the less I think during a broadcast, the better I think I do because it really is supposed to be that natural. And it's funny you bring that up because PA actually said that to me um, after the game because we were talking intermissions like, how you feeling? You know, how you doing? You feeling okay? You having a good time? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm ha- this is great. This is so much fun. And then after the game, I said, so how do you think it went? And he's like, you know what? I knew I had to get into the groove. And he's like, at one point, I was just going to hit my my zone and I was just going to keep going. And he was like, as soon as I got there, he was like, man, that was it was so 
so much fun. And that's exactly how it is because you just, you almost feel, it is really hard to explain, but it's like, you almost feel like you're in the game yourself and you're just yep. like another piece of it. And it's, it's a really weird like thing to describe to somebody who's never done it before. Um, but I truly believe that's when broadcasters become their best. And so PA said he hit it eventually on Monday. And I told him, I was like, now how much better are you going to feel on Thursday once you got one under your belt? Right. Cause it's tough to get it. It's tough to do one for the first time in, in a new sport or in a new environment or with a new team. And, uh, uh, so I'm really excited um, about Thursday as well. And I'm, I'm actually doing Box in the Box with him on Thursday morning um, from the X. So that should be pretty fun to, to be out there with him. And then we'll be back in the sweet Thursday night. So it's going to be it's going to be another fun day at the XL Energy Center. Let's go. I hope we get I hope we get a Caprice off breakaway. So we can, <laughs> yeah. and he's loose. That would be that would be like worlds colliding. See, that's what PA does so well, though. Like, that's what I loved about his call last night um, against the Golden Knights is that he stuck to, like, what he does best. And then yep. he just made it – he made it hockey instead. You know, like, he still was the energetic, the passionate, using a lot of the same phrases he uses for horse racing and football, but integrating it into hockey terminology. And he just did it so seamlessly that I'm like, this is why he's a, he's a pro. I mean, this is – this is how you know we got a good one because it's – and hockey is a tough sport to, to broadcast. I personally – and this isn't me being biased. I've done almost every sport in the book at one point or another. I think hockey is the hardest um, yep. sport to broadcast. And so even at the professional level, somebody like PA, who is one of the best around – um, to jump into that sport at the national, you know, hockey league level and do it as good as he did is just some people will never understand how difficult that is. And he, I, I'm so proud as a friend and a colleague of, of PAs to be able to see him do that and excited to see it again on Thursday. Look at us talking shop here. <laughs> Broadcasters just, just jamming out. Another day in the life. <laughs> just, just the life that we choose to live. And I absolutely love it. Um, Alexis and just, and just recapping, I think this will be fun because we don't necessarily have to elaborate, but I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions mm -hmm. about the division. And then, depending on your answer, I will take over and uh, and go into this okay. later on in the week. So, Central Division, mm -hmm. St. Louis Blues, Nashville Predators, two teams directly above or below the Wild. Did the Wild do enough? to hold them off for the second spot in the Central Division? I really think so. And I talked about my, my dad always calls me when I walk home from the X from work uh, at the end of a wild game. And we always talk about the game. And yesterday we talked about the trade deadline. And uh, we both agreed that we think the wild are going to be the second seed heading into the playoffs. And I truly believe... What we had from the Wild, what they added, now makes them the kind of team who can really beat anybody on any given night. And I have been worried about St. Louis since the beginning of the season. Go back and listen to any podcast episode where we talk about this. And I say it over and over again. I am afraid of playing St. Louis in the playoffs. I don't feel that way as much anymore. I really do feel like the Wild can beat anybody, including Colorado. I don't think they're going to take over that top spot. But I do think the Wild have what it takes to adjust to any team that they're going to play, play that game and play better than them. So I, yes, I think the wild hang on to that second spot. And the final question, the conditional second round pick that the wild are sending to the Chicago Blackhawks becomes a first round pick. If the wilds go to the Western conference finals mm -hmm. or if Mark Andre Fleury wins four games in the first two rounds, yes or no. And I will keep this. I will keep this and we'll come <laughs> back to it. Are the Wilds going to end up sending a first-round pick to Chicago? As I always like to say, full send or no send, yes. Let's yes. go. Yep. Yes. I'm in the same boat. I really, really, truly believe that. And like I said, I don't know if the Wild are going to win a Stanley Cup this season, but I really believe in my heart they are going to make a – and my brain, my heart and my brain, which normally those two aren't on the same page, but this time they are. And I really believe the Wild are going to make a good run here in the playoffs and and maybe shock, maybe shock some people as well. Love that. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Lockdown Wild. So again, as I said, make sure that your second listen of the day is the Bar Down Beauties podcast. Follow Alexis right there on Twitter, right there. There we go. Um, and make sure to follow the Bardown Beauties podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts as well. Part of a great community of Minnesota Wild podcasts keeping you 
as in tuned and up to date as possible on your favorite Minnesota Wild hockey team. Uh, just like Locked On Wilds, we uh, are throwing everything that we have at you in recapping the trade deadline and gearing up for a deep Stanley Cup playoff run. So stay tuned with us and enjoy the rest of this season. Locked On Wild has new episodes coming at you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.